Before I talk a bit about the future of Pearson, I'd like to take us back to look at the past a bit. <coughs> so this is the magic. I don't know if anybody remember this. This is 1970. Uh, Pearson, as you can see, is surrounded by a lot of farmland still, and it handles about 10.5 million passengers. If I remember correctly, you have a Terminal 1 and probably a Terminal 2. This is 1990, 21 million. You can start seeing the development around Pearson. Uh, at that time, I think you still only have Terminal 1 and 2 and probably starting construction of Terminal 3. Pearson 2014, 38.5 million passengers. And now, magically, you have a Terminal 1 and a Terminal 3. And somehow, as everybody always asks me, what happened to Terminal 2? <laughs> how, how come there isn't one? That's an intelligent test. So that when you come to the airport, you want to test to make sure you know how to get to 1 and 2, 1 and 3. One thing interesting about this is what you know at the bottom. We're the 13th busiest airport in North America and the second largest gateway into North America also for international passengers. Probably in 1990, Pearson wasn't even in the top 50. So as Joe mentioned earlier, the world is changing, it's changing fast. And the fact that the economic development in this region has now pushed us to the point that the airport has to grow along with it to serve the need of, of this region. One thing I think we got to remember, business today, business is global. I think most of you are in business. Today, not only is business global, investment is global. Money are moved around the world constantly, quickly. At the same time, tourism and autos is also global. People are flying further and further to see and feel and touch what they want to experience. Because of that, Pearson itself need to be like that in order to not only support the growth of the Toronto region, the southern Ontario region, Ontario, but also Canada. Toronto, Pearson International Airport is the true gateway airport for Canada. Growth for 2014, we hit 38.5 million passengers, 6.8% growth last year. Uh, evenly split between domestic, transporter, and international. And now today, I lump ourselves, all of those transport international growth really is international passengers. It's only in Canada we do the strange thing of counting people going to the state as something else. Everywhere else in the world, once you leave the country, you're an international passenger. So if you think about it, two-thirds of the passenger going through Pearson are international passengers. This year, so far, first three months, I assume if I look at my, uh, my CFO here, that this is things I can disclose. I will not be arrested by the, uh, by the, uh, the, the stock exchange for, 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 for disclosure problem. Uh, first three months, we, we grew by nine, we, we had 9.7 million passengers, we grew by 7% of which predominantly is actually international passengers. This is a long-term projection for Pearson Airport over a 20-year period. Uh, so it looks like we'll, it, the forecast show will hit 64 million passenger, passenger in about 20 years' time. But notice the CAGA, 2.9%. It's a relatively conservative number. But again, the world never goes in straight line. They'll be pretty going up and going down. So today, we're still looking at this as our projection, even though the last two years, the last year, and then so far this year, we have been growing much faster. So why is Pearson growing so much? Pearson is growing so much not because of an airport, not because the airport wants to grow. Airports can't grow. Airport is a reflection of a community resides in. Toronto and the, and the Toronto region, the GTA, and South Ontario is a big economic generator. You heard, you heard uh, mentioned earlier uh, by Bruce. That activity, that economic activity, 
allows a very, very rich network of destination and frequency to serve the passenger that want to come into this region and from this region want to go out to do business. 70% of the passenger coming into my Pearson Airport is actually coming into this region. So that richness, that demand and that richness of, 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 of destination and frequencies then allow people from other part of the North American Eastern Seaboard who may, who of course, if they have direct flight, will go direct, but who does it when they don't have direct flight, they can come through conveniently through Pearson and connect to their final destination. So again, Pearson is growing because of the economic activity that's happening around and for Canada. So if you look at this chart I put on, if you just look at the surrounding area, within a three hour driving distance of Toronto Pearson or Pearson International Airport, there's 12.5 million passengers. Not bad, or, or, or potential customer, that's what the catchment area size is, not bad. If you look upon that, probably Pearson will meet the growth need of this particular region probably for the 20 years. But that is not the catchment area for Toronto Pearson. Because of, the, because of the network, because of the dynamic growth of the northeastern seaboard of North America, this is the catchment area for Toronto Pearson. Within a two hour flying time, there's 200 million potential customers. And in that region, we have competing airports, or partner airport, I think is a better term, JFK, Chicago, and us. Three airport located in fairly very strategic area that provide and support the international aspiration of, of this particular region. But so when you look at again a little bit more detail, if you look at 1985, almost half our passengers are domestically inclined. 2014, we're starting to move up to about 60%. If you go to 2033, only 30% of our passengers are domestic. Again, this is a ref reflection of how business is going go global today. And again, this is a chart that I think you saw from Bruce. It shows the various airport, the percentage of international flights they have. Uh, obviously, a place like Singapore, because it's an island, uh, a city state on it, Therefore, everything it does is international. Toronto Pearson at 23.3 million international passenger is behind and slightly behind JFK at 28.3. But as you notice, we almost double what Chicago has. Even though they have a 70 million passenger throughput, they only have about 10 million international passengers. Obviously, one of the reasons is the US domestic market is so large. But again, this is an opportunity for us because we have that connection we have that, 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 that frequency to places around the world. What does, it, what does an hub airport bring you? A lot of economic benefits. Uh, I think you can read it yourself, this slide, but I think I've read somewhere else and it's been touted that the more direct flight you have between cities and between countries, the more you encourage uh, trade, the more you encourage economic activity between the two, the more you encourage uh, movement of people, either for tourism or just going over there and take a look at what opportunities there are because it's a fascinating place. That kind of connectivity, that kind of activity will then ultimately bring back economic activity back to the, 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 the region where the airport is. Um, one thing I think we've got to think through is that of course, along with the benefit, there is the issue of airport does create noise, airport does create environmental impact. So again, as always, and as airport, we also look at it. What is the way to balance between the economic benefit that an airport, especially a hub airport bring, and also the impact it has on the surrounding community? Uh, a little bit more detail about the numbers. Pearson's economic benefit today, I think some of you have seen, and uh, what we forecast it will be in 2030, doubling what we are doing today. Again, I mentioned earlier, 
there is a finite, and I think Bruce's data show demand in the next 30 years for the region, 30 or 40 years, is almost 90 million. At some point, all airport has limitations. And I think you, you, you saw something, I think Bruce alluded already, as big as Dubai airport is today, they're now building a brand new airport in the desert uh, where they're gonna go handle up to 120, 150 million passengers. So where they are today, just cannot handle it, so they're moving. So what are some of the options? I think that's the study we're looking at. If we believe that an airport is, a, is an economic generator and support the, the, the economic activity of, an, of, of a region that it's in, then I think as responsible airport managers, we need to start the discussion and think about and to make sure and ensure that in the future, an airport is never an economic hindrance when we run into capacity issue. So that's why we're starting this discussion with all our partner airports in the Southern Ontario region, which I think you see them all there. How can we together ensure that there is service, that there is enough activity, there's enough capacity in this area in order to make sure that, that airports themselves, that airport does not become a hindrance to the growth of this region. So I think I will, if I can get this to move, I think Bruce already mentioned this, I won't go through this again. Uh, more than anything else, I think a call to action today, and most of you are planners in this room is, don't forget airport when you start planning. And not just the airport itself. Make sure you remember the ground transportation, the link up, the connectivity between airports. Nobody come to an airport because they like an airport. Even though I work in the business for almost 35, 40 years, and I love airports. When I go through airports, I go and take pictures of all the things that, what I think is good or bad in airports, I can bring it back to learn. Whenever my wife travels with me, she's all embarrassed. But some go around taking pictures to say, you're just like one of those oriental tourists. Just quit that. <laughs> Huh? Quit that. Stop doing that. But it's my business. I got to learn. But I think the key is because an airport is not a final destination, people come to an airport because they want to go to do business somewhere else, either by, by the road, by road transportation, or through the air by connecting to, 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 to other flights, go to other part of Canada. So as a planner, please make sure when you look and think about planning, how do you integrate this very valuable economic asset of the city with the rest of the city transportation so that it is together as a whole and not as little pieces. I thank you for your time. <laughs>